All right. And my sleeper, Anthony Miller of the Chicago Bears. Homer. Um, Homer, is that what is that what you got? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Like it could have been, you know, like other receivers that I would put in like the hype train building and the sleeper train building are like guys like Deontay Johnson and Darius Slayton. Um, you know, they're all sort of kind of the same. Um mm-hmm. Young guys bursting with talent, but I'm going to talk about Anthony Miller. He really came on in a big way after uh, Taylor Gabriel's uh, injury last season, uh, about two thirds of the way through when he was finally deployed as a full-time player from weeks 11 through 15. He had 33 catches for more than 430 yards and two scores. He averaged 5.7 receptions and 72 yards over that span, more than 10 targets a game, which is like wide receiver is one overall target levels. Like that's, that's more than Devonte Adams. That's more than Julio. That's more than Tyreek. Like that's how much this guy was getting targeted. Yes. He put up a dud in week 16 against the Kansas city chiefs. They basically rolled over the bears who were rolling over themselves at that point last season. And then he got injured in week 17 last year. Um, so I understand it's a small sample size, but again, we're talking sleepers here, so that's okay. Um, if you take that five game stretch and you stretch it out over a season, it comes to 91 catches for more than 1100 yards. Like that is extremely usable flex territory, like wide receiver three potential low end wide receiver two territory for a guy that is like ranked in the hundreds that you can get pretty much like guaranteed 11, like 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th round. Um, I'm not worried about Ted Ginn taking playing time away from him because I, I really envision Anthony Miller staying in the slot and I don't think Ginn's going to play the slot. Um, and I'm really not worried about Jimmy Graham. I think everybody saw that Jimmy Graham lost a step when he went to green Bay. And I wouldn't be surprised if he loses another one between green Bay, Wisconsin and <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> it's more than a step probably oh, for really being honest. Right. But then you add Nick Foles, who I think, I think given the trade and everything, I think we will probably end up starting. Over the 2017 and 18 seasons, uh, Nick Foles targeted players lined up in the slot at the sixth highest rate in the league. Like he loves him. Some slot receivers. You put in Anthony Miller, like there's just so much potential there. So much potential. And then you talk about their schedule. Listen to these first six bears games. The Lions, Giants, Falcons, Colts, Bucks, and Panthers. Like, nothing about that is intimidating. So I think that Anthony Miller could potentially come out of the gate white hot and be, if he goes undrafted in, like, smaller leagues, like 10-teamers, I think he'll be a priority waiver ad after the first week or two. I mean, especially if he's out here getting all these targets. So, yes, that's a bit of a homer pick. Again, I could have talked about other guys, but... Anthony Miller, I think, is a fine sleeper for this season. No, I think that's a really reasonable. But I will also say that I think he lost, you know, just listening to sports talk radio here in Chicago. Like he he was kind of buried last year and really wasn't getting on the field much. And from all indications were is that he just didn't know the playbook and was running the wrong routes. And so that's and, you know, how much of that is defending Trubisky or how much of that is or, you know, just what's what's going on. But supposedly he, he wasn't necessarily in in the right spot at the right time, according to where he should have been on given plays. And so that ended him up not playing quite as much. And at the end of the year, when things were. I I don't know about being over for the bears, but uh, they weren't trending in the right direction. He kind of came on at the end when um, to your point, when, when Gabriel was out. And so, I I mean, I think he's fine. I don't think he's going to be there um, at the beginning of the year, the way that you think he is just because I I think that if they do rely on Ted Gann or whether they're running, you know, 12 personnel or whatever, we don't know. Uh, I'll be surprised if he's good. I want him to be good. He was so good as a rookie. He's electric, man. Dislocated shoulder. And he, 
also, you know, he reminded people of Antonio Brown and the way that he was running his routes and what his yeah. size is, but it just didn't happen last year, which is, is not good when they showed up year one and didn't show up year two. So hopefully he gets a fire lit back under him and, and he shows up and is productive. I didn't want to get too much into the coach speak because you know, it's just, that's a lot of times that's just what it is. But the bears wide receiver coach has already come out and said that he's completely changed how he approaches the game. And especially well, this off important. season yeah. and all, all he's doing is studying film of other receivers and trying to become a better receiver. So hopefully he's studying uh, Allen Robinson considering he can literally watch him. If he just looks over about like, you know, right. 20 yards to his right or left. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.